what's the point of view of Raganuga Bhakti and what is the meaning of Timotiya? Uh, Once, Sri Krishna was in Dwarka and he had a headache. So, Narad Muni saw that Krishna was in pain and said, what can I do to help? See, Krishna said, the only cure is the dust of the feet of my devotees. So then, Narada Muni thinks he's not a devotee, he's very humble. So he went to the queens, Rukmini and Satyabhama, he said, please give me some foot dust, so I, your foot dust, so I can put on Krishna's head. So they are married to Krishna. It is against the Mariada, the rules and regulations for the wife to put foot dust on the husband's head. So they refused. So then Narad quickly flew to Vrindavan and said to gopis, Krishna has the uh, headache and the only cure is uh, the foot dust of his devotees. Can you give me your foot dust? So then the gopis, they immediately got dust and rubbed it on their feet and gave so much. Lord <laughs> <laughs> Rishi said, aren't you worried that you may go to hell for putting your foot dust on Krishna's head? He said, we don't care, but Krishna should be happy. So this, then Narada Muni took that dust to Dwarka. And then see Krishna covered himself in gopis with dust. Because actually he didn't have a headache. It was the fire of separation. And only their foot dust could cure it. So, you know that our tilak is a yellow color. Others sometimes are wearing radakun tilak, it's grey. Sometimes they say, oh, why you wear this tilak from Dwarka? We don't want to go to Dwarka. Because our tilak comes from Dwarka. But actually it's not from Dwarka. It was imported to Dwarka from Vrindavan. We're just exporting it back. <laughs> So you can see that our Madhvacharya, he um, discovered the lost deity of uh, Nartak Gopal. And how was he? He found him in a big block of tilak. That means that Krishna for 4,000 years was just immersed in Gopi Sutta. <laughs> You see, once in Dwarka, one day in Dwarka, Rukmini asked Krishna, what was your childhood like in Vrindavan? And when Krishna remembered Vrindavan, tears came in his eyes and his voice was choked, he could not speak. So he told the, mm, the architect of the Devatas, that is Vishwakarma, to carve a deity of himself as Gopal in Vrindavan from a big Shalagram Shila. So then Krishna said to Rukmini, 
you worship this deity and then you can realize something. How is my Vrindavan Lila? Because I cannot explain, it's too emotional. So, at the end of Krishna's Lila, when Dwarka was inundated by the ocean, then this deity disappeared. And then, one day, 4,000 years later, Madhvacharya was there on the shore of the ocean and he saw a ship was coming, but it was being blown here and there in a storm and it was in great danger. So Madhvacharya's incarnation of Hanuman, Bhim Sain and Vayudev, the wind god. So he took his Uttariya and he waved it like this and the wind died down and he guided the ship into the harbor. So then the captain of the ship said to Madhvacharya, uh, you have saved us all. So whatever you like you can ask, is there anything you need? Madhvacharya said, I am a sannyasi, I don't need anything. Then he remembered, oh, do you have some tilak? He said, actually, uh, the ship we had just come from the Dwarka, that means the part of India now which was closest to where Dwarka was. Dwarka was just off the coast. It sank into the ocean. And I took a big block of clay from there and put it in the bottom of my boat as a weight, a ballast, to keep the balance in the boat. So you can take as much tilak as you want. Then Madhvacharya came there and when he touched the big block of tilak, it broke open and inside was Nata Gopal. So our Madhvacharya's Ishtadev in Udupi is Sri Krishna of Vrindavan who was in the ecstasy of being buried in Gopi's foot dust for 4,000 years. <laughs> so this is our Tila. There are two parts. Hmm? But first they are one. First you make one and then you take out the middle. Make it nothing there at all. That means anya bilasita Take out all other desires. Except for one desire. This tosi leaf means Brenda Devi. It represents Brindava. So one side is Krishna and one side is Radhika. So parallel lines never meet. But these parallel lines meet where? In Vrindavan. So our Tilak is the emblem of Manjuribhav. No other desire except for Radha and Krishna should meet in Vrindavan. So in Dragon And the, the tilak itself is Gopi's food dust. Would have prayed rain I would be very lucky if in a future life I could become a blade of grass to get this food dust. So it's a great respect for Braja Gopis and to pray for their mood that I don't care if I have to go to hell as long as Krishna is happy. I have a question about uh, 
de Balaram Tattva. Because I met uh, some people who explained me the point of view of uh, some devotees of Nityananda who stay in Radhakuru. And this lineage, they put a lot of emphasis on Nityananda. And so for me, it's a little bit confusing because it, it seems like uh, it's the same. Because also we think the mercy of Krishna always comes to Nityananda. Mm. But uh, uh, it's all a little bit confusing to me because I cannot understand what is our position in this. Um, because for, uh, for us, what represents Balaram, it was, uh, I, in my understanding, the mercy which gives Balaram is the mercy of Krishna, not his own mercy. No, Balaram is Guru Tattva. So yes, it's Krishna's mercy. But Krishna's mercy always follows the mercy of his devotee. Balaram is Guru Tattva. Balaram is Balaram is I never said anything about the Kerala. What are you saying? No, uh, my question. Oh, the question. Yes, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and, yeah, translate. Uh, uh, Palaram is the Guru Tattva. And uh, Krishna, uh, Minas, who gives the Guru Tattva. Okay. Palaram is Krishna. Krishna is the Guru Tattva. Keshava Dreta Halada Rupa. Balaram is Krishna in Tattva. Krishna has taken the form of Balaram. So is Krishna in the form of his own first servant? So, uh, therefore, Balaram is the Akanda Guru Tattva. Uh, original Guru Tattva. Akanda Guru Tattva is the Chandra Guru. And in Gora Lila, that Balaram is Nityananda Prabhu. So Nityananda is also a kind of Guru Tattva. So, any Vaishnava in this world, to, under whose guidance if we take shelter of them, and they are our Guru, then the power of Nityananda Prabhu is coming through that Vaishnava to you. Otherwise anyone is not Guru. Only Balaram or Nityananda Prabhu is Guru. And when their Shakti is present in someone, then it, that is Guru Tattva. И поэтому, когда мы принимаем убежище, что важна в этом мире, на самом деле сила Шакты Шакты Митинанда Шабы Баларама проходит к ним иногда, и тогда это Гуру Татва. So, uh, we sing the glories of Nityananda Guru, the pastimes of Nityananda Guru, we go to the places of his pastimes, we chant Nittai Goranga, Nittai Gora Haribo, all this. Мы поем славу Нитинанда Прабу, мы слушаем лилы о нем. But those who um, trace their Diksha line to one of his associates or they say that his direct family because Nityanabhu had a son and a daughter, uh, Ganga uh, and Virabhadra. So they, especially in their preaching, put more emphasis on Nityanabhu yeah. than anything else because that is their you know selling point <laughs> you should you should take diksha in our parampara because we are the line of Nityananda Prabhu but Nityananda Prabhu never said that he gives more mercy in his own Pancharatric Diksha line than in anybody else's line. The Tenu <laughs> never told that. <laughs> Anyone who is serving their Guru, every Guru is the manifestation of Nityananda Prabhu. So every line is Nityananda Prabhu's line. <laughs> so sometimes there's some sectarian spirit may come. Not always, but sometimes. <laughs> So, but Nityananda Prabhu is more merciful than Balaram. Just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is most... Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna, but in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is more merciful. When Balaram came into the assembly of Roma Harshan Sut, everyone stood up. Except for Roma Harshan Sutra. What did Balaram do? He took a kush grass and killed him. 
Balaram was playing chess with Rukmi. And Rukmi cheated in the chess match. <laughs> Balaram took his club and killed him. <laughs> but when Jagai Madai attacked Nityananda, especially Madai's, cut his head open with a clay pot of wine. Mm-hmm. Balaram would have killed them both. <laughs> but Nityananda gave prayer. <laughs> so Nityananda was more merciful. There is a parampara who say they are the direct blood of Nityananda, direct descendants. So they are not lying. Because they think they are. <laughs> but it's not, it's not true. <laughs> they are not the descendants of Nityananda, but they are not lying. This, they are convinced they are. They were told, their father, their grandfather, it came in the <laughs> Mm-hmm. There was one uh, Vaishnava born in the line of Nityananda maybe second or third generation named Ramachandra, and he adopted three sons, and they're the descendants of adopted sons because he had no sons. So it's kind of like the family, but not what they're telling the blood, the DNA or whatever. Uh, so in their line, they also, uh, the Acharyas are all Grihasta. In that family, Nityananda Bhams. And the Diksha Mantra is generally throughout history was given by the Acharya's wife, uh, not by the Acharya. So they give two Prampara, Diksha Prampara and Acharya Prampara. The Acharya Prampara is the men and the Diksha Prampara is the ladies uh, who are giving them to. And this is uh, in, only because in Bengal the people were so much into Tantra and in the tantric system, mantra must be given by a woman. But there's no such idea in Vaishnavism. <laughs> so the prampara became like a tantric hybrid. <laughs> and because it's also not any woman, it has to be married into the family. The DNA connection. So now you have this parampara, which is based on the, it's like a, a tantric hybrid DNA parampara. <laughs> and sometimes these persons they say, oh, you have no parampara. What is Bhagavad Parampara? <laughs> it's not written in Shastra anywhere. It's not written in Shastra anywhere. So, one type of guru is who gives you Diksha Mantra, it's called Mantra Guru. And who teaches you the Srimad Bhagavatam is called the Bhagavad Guru. So you can see in the beginning of the Sandarvas, Jiva Goswami says, Atha Natva Mantra Gurum Gurun Bhagavata Dadam. First I give pranam to my Mantra Guru and then to my Bhagavad Gurus. So the word prampara just means hierarchy. So if you have a hierarchy of mantra gurus, then it's called pancharatrik guru parampara. And if you have a hierarchy of Bhagavad Gurus, it's called Bhagavad Guru Parampara. So it's not a, a new style of Parampara called Bhagavad Parampara, it's a Parampara of Bhagavad Gurus. 
So it's Bhagavad Guru Parampara. But they don't understand, they think Bhagavad Parampara, that's not in Shastra. No. Hierarchy of Bhagavad Guru, Bhagavad Guru Parampara. So we can show that the Bhagavad Guru Parampara is everywhere in Shastra. Huh? Because hmm, Vyasadev did not give Diksha to Shukadev Goswami. Mm-hmm. Shukadev Goswami did not give Diksha to Prakshit Maharaj. Prakshit Maharaj did not give Diksha to Utra. But, but it's still a parampara. Vishnu Tagi Thakur said, this is the, the Bhagavad Pram, Guru Parampara. In his commentary on the third verse of Bhagavatam, Nigamata Kaputaru Galitam Palam Shukamukadamrita Drabe Samyatam, he said, this Bhagavatam is rasa. It's the fruit of the, the juice of the fruit of the Vedas. And just as juice runs down, so this rasa runs down from Narad to Vyas to Shukadev to Purikshit Maharaj to Uttara, like that. So the Bhagavad Guru Prampara has been directly described in the commentary on this verse by Srila Rishon Ah, in the Yes, Shukudev, Brakshit Maharaj. No Diksha to. No, Brakshit Maharaj has Diksha from Kripacharya. So in the Bhagavad Guru Prampara, everyone can have Diksha, but it may not be. The previous Guru may or may not be uh, their Diksha Guru from the consideration of Bhagavad Guru Prampara. So if there's no Bhagavad Guru Prampara, then how can we be called the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya? Because Chaitanya Mahapu didn't give Diksha to anyone. <laughs> so if Mahapu came to establish Panchachit Guru Prampara, why didn't he give Diksha to no one? Uh, Mahapu's main follower is Rupa Goswami. Mm-hmm. Mahapu didn't give Diksha to him. Uh, mm-hmm. Rupa Goswami's main follower is Raghunath Das Goswami. Rupa Goswami didn't give Diksha to him. Uh, uh, Raghunath Das Goswami's main follower is Sila Krishnas Karaj, who wrote Chaitanya Charanita. Uh, Raghunath Das Goswami didn't give Diksha to him. Uh, so in Shastra and in history, the Bhagavad Guru Parampara is everywhere. And nowhere in Shastra is a tantric hybrid DNA Parampara. So be very fixed in Siddhanta, don't have any doubt. So, uh, and he told me that uh, his Ishta is uh, Ityananda. His and what? His Ishta. Yes, yes. And uh, so is it possible that uh, Balaram is the Ishta dev of some uh, Vaishnavas? And I ask him. And uh, he tell that because uh, Balaram is uh, Ananga Manjari, so in uh, this Ishta is uh, uh, included the Rasa with Krishna. Because uh, he is Ananga Manjari, so Rasa is included in this. <laughs> This is very good Apasidanta. <laughs> in the you see, some of our acharyas also have diksha in the Nityananda Pariva. Or Janava Pariva. And the reason Sula Bhaktino Thakur and Bhakti Sansu Thakur put the emphasis on the uh, Bhagavad Guru Parampara is because in that Diksha line some personalities came along and they wrote books and this and that and the Siddhanta was not good. So how can you worship your Parampara if some people of your Parampara wrote some wrong things? 
А, Шрила Бабская Сара Сади Такур, Шрила Бабская Сара Сади Такур, они всячески подчеркивали важность Бабы Акура Харамбара, потому что вот дичь или неприятственности, какие-то люди писали книги, какие-то делали утверждения, которые не соответствовали Сиданте. So one of them, there was a devotee in Nityananda Bruce Line called Nityananda Das, and he wrote a book called uh, Ananga Manjari Samputika. И, например, один был преданный в этой линии, Нитинанда Прабху Нитинанда Дас, который написал книгу Ананга Манджи. And there he explained that Nityananda Prabhu is Ананга Манджи. И там он стал объяснять, что Нитинанда Прабху это Ананга Манджи. Окей. It has some also funny some things which are rasa bas also some other things but we'll just focus on this one thing. А также там много других вещей, которые являются rasa басом, но мы сфокусируемся на этом. So, if Nityananda Prabhu is tasting Madhuras through Ananga Manjari because she is his Shakti. She is Balaram Shakti. Then Krishna must be tasting Madhuras through Radharani who is his Shakti. Then there is no reason for Mahaprabhu to appear. So their conclusion, their conclusion, conclusion completely eradicates the necessity for any Gora Lila. <laughs> for Gora Swarup even, for Gora to exist. If Balaram is tasting Madhuras through his Shakti and Alamanjari, then Krishna is tasting Madhuras through his Shakti Radhika, then no need for Gora Lila. So we never accept their conclusions, and because throughout history our acharyas always could cut their ideas, so they became angry and said, "Oh, you have no parampara." So, but anyway, we respect all devotees. We don't criticize them. But if they'll tell anything against our parampara, then the point will cut the point, not the person. Because these panchartic pramparas, which have uh, have some deviation in them, they can be reinvigorated by contact, friendly contact with the Bhagavad Guru prampara. Uh, can деле, make them bona fide again. Uh, so that's Nityananda Bhu's real mercy. <laughs> Jai Nitai. Jai Nitai.